وآله وأصحابه أجمعين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة لا يكلمهم الله يوم القيامة ولا ينظر إليهم ولا ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم شيخ زان وعائل مستكبر وملك كذاب the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this authentic hadith that there are three people who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not look at on the Day of Judgment. He will not speak to them. He will not purify them from their sins and for them is a painful punishment. And even before you go even any further in the hadith, you're saying to yourself, that's four different punishments, you know, that are major. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not speak to them. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have personal dialogue with his servants on the day of judgment to question them about what they did, to question them about their sins, to question them about their record. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in another hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will يَسْتَخْرِجُ رَجُلًا مِنْ إِبَادِهِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will single out an individual on the day of judgment and bring him in front of everybody and ask him um, to look at his scrolls. And 99 scrolls will be brought out. That 99 scrolls will be brought out, each scroll as far as the eye can see. On it is written his deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, did my angels wrong you in anything? Read your book. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Iqra kitabaka kafa bi nafsika liyoma alika hasiba. Read your book. Today you are a proof against your own self. So this is personal dialogue between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> and his servants on the day of judgment. He said that Allah will not speak to him on the day of judgment. And Allah will not look at him. And this shows that another reward, Yom Al-Qiyamah, the greatest of the rewards that the servant will receive, Yom Al-Qiyamah, is the ability to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look back at you. There's nothing greater than that. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith that the person will be in paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him all that you see is yours. And then the angels will say, come, you have a greater reward. And the person in paradise will say, well, what can be greater than this? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the veil and he will be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. There's nothing that is greater than being able to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to supplicate, oh Allah, do not make it forbidden for us. Don't prevent us from looking at your noble face. SubhanAllah wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at this individual yawm al-qiyamah. وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ And then Allah will not purify them for their sins. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to go through trials and tribulations in this life so that we enter into the next life free of sin. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the trials and tribulations will continue to come to the individual حَتَّى يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئًا Until he is walking on the earth sinless. Trial after trial after trial in our lives that come to us and we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get us out of the situation But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in the situation because when Allah loves you, He tests you The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Either ahabba Allahu qawman ibtala'um That when Allah loves the people, He tests them He tests them while we look at the test as a punishment for something that we did wrong And in fact, it may be an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you but Allah won't purify this individual from his sin. And they will have a painful, painful punishment. So who are these three people? What is it so wrong that they've done? The Prophet ﷺ said the first of these three, Shaykh Zanin, is an old elderly person who still fornicates. A person who is older in age, shaven, gray in his beard, has had the experiences of life that should have taught him better and still at this very mature age of his life, he still continues to sleep with women that he is not married. Shaykhun Zanin, he is an older person who continues to fornicate. And the scholars that explain this hadith explain that 
the reason why the punishment for him is so great, and anyone who fornicates obviously will have to deal with that Yom Kiyama. That doesn't excuse a young person for sleeping with someone that they're not married to. However, the difference between the young person and the elderly person is that the young person, you expect that. Especially with men, they have high testosterone levels, and if they have a lack of self-control, self-discipline, then this is something that is to be expected of them. This is behavior that is expected of young people who lack self-control, who lack understanding of life and the repercussions of their actions, right? Which is why the hadith that we covered before when Usama killed the man in between the two rocks, the Prophet asked him, Usama, did you kill him after he said la ilaha illallah? He wasn't aware of the repercussions. Usama was only 18 years old when the Prophet died. The Prophet put him at the head of an army at 17 years old. He was a young kid, not really understanding, and that's part of being young, is that you don't really understand the repercussions of your actions. That's just part of the young experience. Think back to when some of us were young. We did things that we wouldn't even consider doing today because we know better. We know better today because we've had certain life experiences that have taught us better. Young people have yet to have those experiences, so as a result, they do things without considering the repercussion of their actions. An older person to commit zina, even in his elderly age, is something that is, should be intolerable, and something that he should have more self-control than to allow himself to succumb to something like that. And so as a result of that, this will be his punishment, Yom Qiyamah, that Allah will not speak to him, will not look at him, will not purify him from his, from his sins, and for him is a painful punishment. Think about how many older people you know out there today, aunts, uncles that we have, that still call themselves someone's boyfriend or girlfriend. She's 41, 50, 55, she's going out on a date, trying to get herself back, trying to find herself. And you're saying to yourself at 55 years old, how are you still calling yourself someone's girlfriend? How, at 40 years old, how are you the age of the peak of maturity for men? All prophets and messengers receive revelation at 40 years old because for men, that is the peak of our maturity. How is it at 40 years old, you're still calling yourself someone's boyfriend? Wallah at that stage in life, you have surpassed that. We're not 16 years old anymore. That's, that's something you do 15, 16, adolescence. Not something you do as a mature adult with gray in your hair. Number two, Ailun Mustakbir is a poor person that is arrogant. A poor person that is arrogant. That this person is in a situation where they don't have the right to be arrogant. If you don't have it, anything, as the scholars say, faqidu shay la yurati, someone who doesn't have anything can't give anything. So how can you even be arrogant? How can you have the audacity to be arrogant? And you'll find today, I, I, on a number of occasions, I, I recall just a few weeks ago in New York, it's very cold outside. And guys walking down the street, he has on literally flip-flops. Flip-flops with no socks on. It's freezing cold outside. And he's walking around picking up cans. And so I had a pair, extra pair of sneakers in, in, the, in my trunk that I always keep in my trunk for when I go to exercise. So I get out and I ask the guy, I said, you know, what size do you wear? You know, I wanted to just give him the sneakers. And he said, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And I said, no, I want to help you. Like, it's freezing cold outside. You have on slippers. He said, I'm okay. Get away from me. I'm okay. And you're saying to yourself, subhanAllah, you won't even accept help. But then when you sit in a car and you stare out into the individual, at the individual, you say, you feel sorry. But then when you try to help the person, he shuns you to get away from him. And it's pride. It's pride. You won't let somebody help you. You don't have a right to be prideful. You don't have a right to be arrogant. Allow people to help you. Because people walk by and see your condition and they feel sorry for you. But after that ordeal, I don't feel sorry for you anymore. Because you are in the situation because that's where you want to be. You're not in that situation because of circumstance. We feel bad. You're in the situation because you have too much pride. And the, and the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of people who are homeless are homeless not because they don't have a home to go to, not because they don't have family members to take care of them, but because there's some reconciliation that they need to take, take on between them and their families, and they refuse to do it. They refuse to go and tell someone, I'm sorry, I apologize. They burnt bridges that they do not want to repair. And as a result of that, they, they rely on that pity of the people. And it's, it's not fair. It's not fair to the dunya because there are people who are in need who welcome help. Who welcome help. 
But for someone to be, you know, to be poor and then still turn around and be arrogant at the same token, you know, this is, this is something that is intolerable. This is something in Islam that is not permissible. That if you are in need of help, then ask for the help. Of course, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost, and then you ask the people as the people will facilitate, you know, that, that help to you. Um, and the third person is Al-Malik al kiddab is a king who lies. A king who lies. And subhanAllah, and we don't live in a time where we have kings, I mean, other than what goes on in Great Britain, but in our society, we don't live under a quote-unquote monarchy, so we don't see kings and queens. But what we do have is we have politicians, we have people in positions of authority, we have mayors, we have senates, we have people in senate seats, we have mayors, we have politicians who lie, who are in positions of authority to make change, and they still lie to people. They lie to people, and they are in positions of authority. Husbands who lie to their wives, men who are in positions of authority, who have no reason to lie. When you are the medic, when you are the king, when you are the person in authority, the control, the sultan is in your hand. You don't have to lie. You don't have to think about how many men lie to their wives. You have men today who take on second wives and say nothing to the first wife. What are you, what are you afraid of? You are the king of your castle. You are the imam of your home. Why do you have to lie? And you think about how many sisters who find out that they have co-wives online or they go into a particular masjid and the woman comes up to her and say, hey, I'm married to your husband. What, like what, in what world is this okay? In what world is this okay? For a woman to find out that her husband fulfilled a right that Allah gave him, which is to have another wife, she finds out through the woman approaching her and telling her because the husband was too cowardly to come and tell her himself. What world do we live in? And this is why women don't respect men today. Because we haven't assumed our role, our responsibility. And Malik al kadab the person who is a king who lies, a person that is in a position of authority, and he abuses his authority by lying to the people. And if you look at all three of these people, the first one who is the, 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 the older person who commits fornication, the uh, poor person who is arrogant, and the king who lies, when you look at all three of these people, they all have one thing in common. They all have one thing in common, and that is that they are all in a situation where they are exuding behaviors that they have no right to. They have no right to. And I mean, these are just categories. And I mean, well, Haluma Jakra, and you can also fit into those categories other people who are in positions who do things that are not commensurate with their station or their position in life. A person that, you know, is, is, is a king doesn't need to lie. A person that's a king is in a position of authority, the sultan, he doesn't have to lie. He tells the truth because there's no one who is going to hold him accountable. He is the authority. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm just a reminder for myself and for everyone else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu ala nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim al kathira wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.